morning everyone here we're at makers machining and we're making a bronze shaft with a spline in it and Dave here is working on that and he's set the lathe up to do a milling cut to get the spline made on there so the spline slides in and out of the mating part uh, there's it's a it's a couple thousand clearance fit at the most and uh, what he's got here he's got the setup made he made the round blank and everything we made a sample part out of aluminum that's laying here somewhere. We didn't want to use up our, our bronze material, so we did a trial run on the on the aluminum to make sure it fit and got our sizes right. You can see the shank is turned, there's a cross hole in there, and uh, we've got all the brass pieces turned to the same arrangement there. We've got uh, seven or so of these things that we're doing, uh, and now we are cutting them in the lathe just to get the spline cut in there. So we've got this set up in the chuck. We've got a small collet attachment held in the chuck. The collet attachment has a stop in the back, whereas the chuck, you couldn't get the stop up as far to the front. But you also need to have enough room between the jaws and the chuck and our milling cutter. Which, which one you use it, Dave, for cutting the, the spline space? Uh, that one right there has got one of, one of the cutters that's used to cut this spline shape in there. If you look back at this spline shape, you'll see here that it's got some, some depth on it there. What's the OD of these splines? They have inch 236 or something like that? Yeah, actually I believe. it's uh, like about 835. 835, okay. Or 875. Okay, 875 at the bottom of the grooves. The OD over the top of the spline teeth is 1.236, I believe. Uh, we got our we got our print right here that uh, that we're working from gives you all the cross section views there all the different dimensions that we've got to hold. So we made a cutting tool that actually goes in you an index that thing around it uh, goes in and cuts the the teeth. And if you look, we're trying to maintain a flat on the print here of 0.370 across the flats on each on each tooth. But our cutter on our, on our lathe matches up the profile inside between the teeth, so it's got an angle between each one. It's kind of a V cut, and it cuts out the bottom of the part. I'm going to go over here, and I'll show you the, the cutter that actually does the, the uh, shape there. You can see it's got, it's got the flutes are ground at the right angle, the correct angle, I should say and uh, the bottom has the, the correct distance across from the corner to corner, so the bottom of our groove is, is correct. So we're going to get this card out of the way here, and Dave is going to go ahead. You can turn that thing on, Dave. We'll get back out of the way here and close that door up a little bit. We're going to turn the outside diameter of the part to get, get the diameter turned correctly. We indicated our part. I, I neglected to say we had an indicator on there. We double checked it to make sure it was running within a half a thousandth of the shank being held in the collet to what we're going to cut now with the spline. So I was explaining there's a small collet attachment in there. We need to have the, when, when this uh, when this shape tool comes in here and the other tool that breaks the corners in each tooth comes in, we have to have enough room for the turret to clear uh, when it's over by the jaws of the chuck. If we put this straight in the chuck with the jaws, it gets a little bit tight quarters in there for machining the steps there. So go ahead, Dave, you can do your uh, your OD turn there. Leave it open just a smidge and we can see what's going on in there. I'll, I'll come back here. You got coolant that's gonna be blasting all over the place here? Yeah, just turn, turn the coolant off for this one piece. back in the right starting spot because we indexed that thing around. Put that right around. What kind of RPM you had, Dave? 
pallet there so we can overall wet correct. We saw these things a little bit longer, we had some length on the uh, large diameter to hold our work. I'll do with the other piece here. This only takes a minute to, to do the uh, OD work and the, uh, I think we put bevels on the corners as well. She's coming in there. Oh, that's a center drill mark in there? Okay. So he's he's putting a center drill mark in there. The center drill mark is going to let the uh, tail stock come in and support the part while we're doing our cuts. You got a peck cycle going on there. If you notice, the center's got a sharp point on it. And when we do our center drill, it's going to cut the angle for this, this uh, center to rest in. But we have the center drill has a long straight point on it that goes deeper than what the uh, uh, center requires. So your hole from your center drill is deep enough. center is long and uh, it hits the same angle so that's supported in there now so now we can get in there and finish our work look through the window that's what they got windows in these machines for idea Tom. We'll take a couple light cuts here. It's, it takes a little bit longer to make a few passes but at least we're able to uh, not knock the part out of kilter. Now we've got good support with the tail stock in there. We're making a few light passes here and now we're getting a bevel on the end of the shaft where the spline teeth are. Look at how fast all those little moves are. Now it takes a, a cut all the way across so everything is concentric and and he's got a, what is that, a 55 degree tool you got there Dave? Uh, 35. 35 degree, that's what I said. So now he's ready to bring in, probably bring in the uh, next tool for cutting the splines actually on there. So he got that thing up and running. You saw the chuck index around. How many passes per tooth? Uh, it's, I don't know how many, but we're going down 10,000 per, 10, 10, per pass deeper. So that's cutting the flat on the bottom of the groove and the, the bevel of the, the gear. And you can see how close it gets to the chuck there. Just think if you didn't, or the, the big jaws, just think if you didn't have this collet holder in there, how close you would get there to the, to the chuck. Although the chuck is not spinning right now. You've got tools on the other side of the turret way in the back there that also you have to make sure you're clear from. <clears throat> so we'll let this thing run its uh, pass out here. What, what's the cycle time on this? That takes a little while. It's okay. probably 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so we're not going to be able to watch the whole thing. We're at 9 minutes already and it goes 15 or 20 minutes. Does that index towards us? The, the two? Oh, the it goes way. the other way. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try to get this camera in there a little closer. cut each tooth individually and then we've got a gauge that we use that we check them with. Got a couple thousand clearance in there. As soon as we get one tooth done we'll let this thing index around. Okay, good. Dave's gonna tell me what's gonna index so I don't jump and drop the camera. Here, taking a little heavier cut because it's getting deeper and it's got more cutting surface that it's making. We've got to clear the, the center. We've got to clear the tank in the back. We've got to make sure the turret doesn't hit up against the jaw. 
calibrating. Lots of things you gotta watch out for when you make the setup. You need that space in there. Carbide cutter in there with special ground to uh, make these uh, teeth. We have we have full and cutter grinders here, and we'll have a, a video on that one of these days of how we sharpen different types of cutters. Uh, it's quite interesting some of the machinery how they can make all these different angular cuts for you. Now on the, on the top of the on the top of each spline tooth, it's going to be a burr on there. So we've got another tool that comes around, which happens to be the one right up here. And it engages and, and comes in and just breaks the corners off of that. Any more passages? Four, four more passes. We should be. Uh, are you going in at the end of each stroke, or are you going in and back and then down? Okay. You start to see the chips coming off of there. Last pass here. Oh, you can hear it. It's just doing a, a cleanup cut there. Okay, the chuck is indexed. Starting with the next one. How many teeth are you putting in there? Six? You got six teeth? Okay, so we've got that going in there. Let's take a look again here at, uh, at a finished part. We've got all these nice teeth cut in there. The, the, the edges of the teeth are all beveled, and they go into this I'm going to say tongue and cheek this 3D printed mating part. I can't quite get it out of there. It's, it's really a good fit. But uh, it's a 3D printed, printed part. Uh, the mating splined hole that, that we're checking against couldn't, was not available. So they digitized that shape and then printed out a mating hub. So we've got a nice finish on everything here. There's certainly some uh, calculations involved with uh, figuring